What? But that's impossible. I already defeated you. You're just part of a video. And you're also way easier than last time. <laughs> um, hello? <laughs> What's going on here? This wasn't part of the pumpkin video. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I don't remember coding that in. Uh, uh who? What the heck is... Oh my... Oh! Oh, sh... <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to possibly the most anticipated video I've ever had the pleasure of working on. You see, on January 25th, 2021, I released a video on this channel about making a boss in vanilla Minecraft that absolutely blew up. I'll be honest, I never expected it to grow like crazy. I was just interested in adding more bosses to Minecraft and wanted to share my methods with others who shared the same interest. The video series was popular, but truth be told, it was a little flawed. For example, I really glazed over the scoreboard section and was more focused on showing what I had done rather than walking through step by step at the same time. This was actually because I had already created the Pumpkin on my own time. Spoiler alert, I know. <laughs> and wanted to deconstruct my labor into a tutorial after the fact. But now, we're gonna do things better. Minecraft is in 1.19, at, at least it is as of recording. <laughs> I've had even more time to mess around with commands, and this time, we're doing it all from scratch. At the very same time, so you can follow along line for line. Per usual, I'll have all of the important commands in my paste bin in the video description, but I can't fit every single thing we work on in there, so there might be some omissions that are purely aesthetic commands that you can still do by following along with the videos. Oh, and that reminds me, this tutorial is for beginners, so I'm making this boss at the easy level. That said, this tutorial will definitely be more than one video because of everything we have to go through, so keep in mind these will be coming out as a series as fast as I can edit them all. So. Without further ado, here is the official tutorial on how to make an easy level boss in vanilla Minecraft 1.19 and up. First things first, we have to pick what mob we're going to bossify this time. Last time it was the Stray, and while this is great for cosmetic and gear purposes, as this boss is going to be simpler, I figured why not the pinnacle of all first RPG bosses? Let's work on the slime. I know, I know, not very imposing, but with a little bit of tweaking, I reckon this guy's got a shot to make it big up there with the pumpkin and any other bosses we create in the future. But before we even get to designing our boss in MC Stacker, we need to make sure we can run some tests. So let's just summon a normal slime using commands instead of a spawn egg for now. Okay, now that we know what boss we're going to fight, how do we actually summon it to fight? Well, before we actually use some really fancy item detection methods, but for a much simpler and easy to follow solution, we are just going to use a button. If you need to contextualize this for your players, think of it like choosing an enemy in an arena. So, if we go ahead and look in our first normal command block here, we're simply going to want to summon the boss at a specific set of coordinates. Let's just go ahead and grab the center of this ring I made for testing, which we can do by pressing F3, and then on the right-hand side, we see it's 6, negative 61, 2. All right, so let's put this together. We want to use our summon command. We want to make sure we're summoning a slime, and then we can input those coordinates. Again, these are going to vary. If you guys are following along and testing in your own worlds, make sure you get the coordinates of where you want to summon your testing boss. Of course, we can always go back and change this later, so it doesn't have to be permanent. Okay, let's just make sure everything is working so far and we know how to do our command basics. So if I press confirm and click this button, sure enough, there we have our slime, although I guess it was one block in the ground, so I probably want to boot that Y value up by one. There we go. Et voila, our slime. So what are the actual design steps to creating a boss? I mean, a slime is great and all, but when should we jump into making hundreds of attacks in different phases? Well, let's take a look at another Minecraft boss for inspiration. Ah, the Ender Dragon. Minecraft's first true boss. It's been around probably longer than some of you watching this video at this point. Oh god, I feel old. And although it's been updated a few times, the dragon still remains as the main challenge of Minecraft, and a good staple to take some examples from. So, what are some of the things we notice about this encounter? Well, number one. We notice right off the bat that it has a health bar. That's usually the best indicator of a boss or event. Some kind of health bar that shows up on the UI of a player's screen that the player then has to cleave through. Number two, that's a big boy. 
No other mob in Minecraft matches this thing's size. Like, except the giant, I guess, if we're technically speaking of mobs in Minecraft, but not- but you know what I mean. So making an enemy imposing means business. Number three, ads. While it technically doesn't summon them, you're very likely to at least accidentally engage in combat with an Enderman, if not outright, then to clear a path. This makes the fight more challenging because the player can't just focus on one threat. Number four, strategic weak points. While you could just wail away with precision aim on a max enchanted bow, the designers intended this fight to have strategy and thought put into it. Climb the towers, destroy the dragon's healing source, take aim, and then go in close when it lands. And number five, different attacks. Unlike most mobs in Minecraft, the Ender Dragon actually has unique attacks that it switches between. Not many, but it's more than just about every other mob running straight at you and dealing contact damage. Okay, I think that's enough for now. So, our list as it stands for a good boss fight in Minecraft is as follows. A health bar. It should be imposing. There should be minions or other threats. There should be strategy involved. And our boss should have different abilities. We can definitely work with this when designing our slime boss. Now, keep in mind I didn't say anything about difficulty. That's because we're just looking for inspiration on what separates a boss fight from a skirmish with a tough mob. By adjusting our five steps, you can make any boss harder or easier as you see fit. For this tutorial, our boss is going to be on the easier side, but feel free to bump up the damage or health values if you want something harder. Okay, now that we have a good idea of what we should do to our slime to make it boss worthy, let's start going down the list. First up, let's make sure we can give our boss a health bar that actually represents how much health it has left and make sure it can update in real time. The way we're going to do that is with the boss bar command. This is a very specific command that lets you create those health bars like the one we saw with the ender dragon. Technically, they can track anything. It doesn't have to be health. You can use them to track scoreboards or even timers, but that's a challenge for another video. For now, we just need to go through the process of adding one. So we'll do slash boss bar add, and then we're going to have to give it an ID. This can be anything, but it should be something we can remember. So for now, I'll put slime king like that. Then we'll have to give it a proper name, something that the players will actually see client side. We have to use quotes because it's in a string, and I'll call mine the king of slimes. Perfect. And if you don't like whatever you come up with, you can actually change this really easily later without messing with any of your code. Okay, now our boss bar is created, but as you can see, we can't see anything on the top of my screen yet. We have to make a few modifications first by doing slash boss bar set the ID of our boss bar, which is Minecraft colon Slime King, and then whichever value we want to set. Let's go ahead and change our boss bar's color to green to match the slime. So I can press color, and then you see we have a whole list of options that come up. I will type green. There we go. Next up, we should set the max to be equal to whatever the health of our slime is. We don't actually know this yet, so I can come back later. I'll skip down to style, and this is totally optional, but I like choosing one of the notched styles to let my players measure their progress. So for now, I'll just do notched 10. Finally, let's go to boss bar set players, and we'll add myself for the purposes of testing. And voila, it shows up empty on our screen. But hang on, before we rejoice, I only added it to myself for testing purposes. What happens when a new player on your server or map, wants to see the health bar without you adding them manually to the player pool. Well, if we actually go back to our summon command chain from before, we can start adding another chain command block after it that will add all players within, for now, let's say a 20 block radius to the boss bar pool. So if we open this up and type slash boss bar set, then again, the ID of our boss bar, which is Slime King, we'll do players, and now we'll do at A with the parameters of distance, two dots to say that we're being inclusive of 20 blocks. Great. Now make sure this is set to chain and always active as we don't want to send a redstone signal through the whole thing. I'll press done. Now when the boss is summoned, any new players within our defined radius of the command block will be able to see your boss bar whenever it's visible. Just like that. Which brings us to our next point. 
how do we make sure that the boss bar is actually linked to our slime's health and that it's only on screen when our slime is? Well, for that, we're going to have to get into the nitty gritty of the slash execute command, specifically the store parameter of it. You see, boss bars can track all sorts of stuff, including data values of entities. So what we have to do is link the health data value of our boss slime to our boss bar. Now, this will be more foolproof once we actually build our slime in MC Stacker, but we can still do it temporarily for now. I've put down a repeating command block here that's also set to always active to make sure this happens no matter what. And we'll want to start with the execute command. And then we want to type in the store argument. If I press space, you'll see it's asking for the result or success. We want the result, which will be stored as a numerical value, instead of a success, which is just stored as true or false. Now, we're trying to store the boss's health in our boss bar, so that's what we'll pick. Then, of course, our boss bar ID. And then we want to set this as the value of our boss bar, not the max. Now we need our actual run command, which will be data get entity. And then we need to select our slime king somehow to let the command block know we're trying to get the health data from our slime boss. I know we're going to name him king of slimes. So what we can do is type at e and get these little brackets for extra parameters. And for now, we'll go with the name parameter. Now, there are more foolproof ways to determine entities with tags and other form of tracking. But for now, in our easy boss tutorial, I think a name is something easy to follow and can be changed on the fly. So we'll stick with this for now. So if I type name, we need two quotation marks to indicate that we're typing a string. And of course, we actually need the name of our boss, which will be King of Slimes. But you'll notice we get an error here saying that while only one entity is allowed, our selectors allow for more than one entity to be targeted. And what does that mean? Well, basically, because we're executing a very specific command, the game should only find one target for us to read the data of. But in theory, there could be multiple entities with that name, King of Slimes. So the game says, we can't do this. So how do we get around it? Well, we can actually go back in, add a comma and another parameter, this time the limit parameter. And we can set the limit to be one to say that the game will choose only one entity with the name King of Slimes to execute our data command on. And because on my server at least, it will be the only mob named that, then we should be fine. If you're still worried about this, there are lots of other parameters you can add, like distance to say only find a name King of Slime within 20 blocks. But to keep it simple, we'll just stick with these two parameters for now. And then finally, we need the path of the data we want to get. There's no easy way to figure this out, there is a list of data paths in the Minecraft directory itself, or you can scrounge around on the wiki. But from previous testing, I know the name of the path we want is health with a capital H. Okay, that should be our boss bar ready to go. All right, enough messing around. We actually want to see this in action. We'll just need to actually name our slime, King of Slimes, to make sure the boss bar knows which entity to target, which we can quickly add in our summon command, and I'll go more depth into when we get into MC Stacker. Okay, again, don't worry too much about these parameters. The game will do it automatically for you when we get to MC Stacker. This is just to show us that it works. Now that I've cleared myself from the boss pool, you can see that the bar has disappeared just to show that everything will work when we press this button. Now when we summon our slime, we should see the health bar pop up and give us the value of its health, which as you can see right now is about two. And if I punch the slime, you can see the boss bar update in real time, thanks to our repeating command block. So far, so good. But there's one more thing you might have noticed we need to fix with our boss bar just before we move on to MC Stacker. After our slime boss is dead, the bar is still at the top of my screen. There are a couple of ways to fix this, however. The first is simply removing the boss bar once the boss is dead. This is quick and efficient, but problematic if you want to have your boss be summoned more than once, as you'd have to remake the boss bar every time. Another option is to just set the boss bar to simply be invisible, as that is a parameter, once the Slime King is dead. This is great, because we could add a command in our chain that just turns the bar to visible again once the boss is summoned, but the bar retains all old players that once saw the boss bar, even if they're more than 20 blocks away. So if you're playing survival elsewhere in that village, you'll still see the boss bar pop up. So for now, until Mojang updates this, the best way to kill two birds with one stone is to simply do slash 
boss bar, set the ID of our boss bar, players with no more parameters. If I just press enter, you can see that that actually clears all players within the boss pool. Your boss bar is still there, don't worry, you'll just have to re-add players to the pool again when you want to see it, which we're already doing in the summon boss command. So as for where to actually put this command, we'll eventually want to include it in a boss death command chain, but for testing purposes, we can just put it in a normal command block with a button for now. Just like that. We should also set up a kill command for our boss so we can do some rapid testing, which I've already done here. This is just a simple kill command with the entity tag, and then again, selecting the entity by the entity's name, King of Slimes. So let's go ahead and kill off our boss and then clear the boss bar, which you can see disappears with the command, but don't worry, it is still there. It will show up again once we summon our boss. And just to show that this is a closed loop, let's go ahead and kill the boss again and clear the boss bar. Look at that. We have everything for our boss currently working in four command chains. Like I said, at the end this will all be automatic, but for now we'll keep it all manual just for testing. Alright, that was a lot of setup. But now that we have our first step out of the way, we can move on to step two. Making our boss imposing by changing the attributes to be stronger than that of a normal mob. So, as most of you know by now, it's time to head over to ol' MC Stacker. Alright. Welcome to the command creator's best friend, MC Stacker. Here you can generate virtually any command line in Minecraft from a handful of drop down menus. I cannot explain how much time this website has saved me and I hope it does the same for you. Now we want to create a boss that spawns with attributes when we press our summon boss button. So let's just select the slash summon command as that's the command we're already using. Great. Now we get a whole bunch of different fields. First, we need to fill in a few of our parameters to keep things in line with our previous testing. We need to click this drop down menu here and change the mob to slime, our summon coordinates to be that of where we want the boss to spawn, and also make sure this custom name tag down here is set to be King of Slimes, spelled and capitalized the same way we have it written on our health bar command. I should take a pause here to remind you that this stage of the boss creation is completely up to you. If you want to follow along word for word so you can get the hang of making a boss, then great. But if you want to use this tutorial to make a boss of your own, then I suggest changing the parameters like name, potion effects, and others to be whatever you want your boss to entail. Just remember to stay consistent. If the name of your boss is Ultra Beast here, then it has to be Ultra Beast everywhere. So. Now for the fun part. We have the basics of our slime setup, but now we need to make it more like a boss. Well, the first thing we should change is set custom name visible to always be true. This makes it so players will always see the name of the boss above its head. Next, we're gonna jump down to max health, as I think we should establish a base max health for this slimy adversary. Once again, we could look to the ender dragon for inspiration. We don't want our simple slime boss to be as tough as the final boss of the game, but we do need some sort of scale to base our attributes off of. According to the Minecraft wiki, the Ender Dragon has a max health of 200 hit points, which equates to 100 hearts, as health points are represented by half a heart each. On the other end of the spectrum, let's look at one of the most common enemies in the game, the zombie. These guys have a max health of 20, or 10 hearts. That's a pretty big difference, with some quick math. The Ender Dragon should take about 10 times as long to kill as an ordinary zombie, and that's before we add any fancy attacks and other strategy into the mix. So, by raw stats alone, we want our boss to be tough, and seeing as it won't have as much maneuverability as the Ender Dragon does, I think giving it a big health bot to soak some hits would be okay. Let's set it to... 120 health, which will come out to be about 60 hearts. Nothing crazy, and we can always tweak this later if we feel the boss is too strong or too weak. But now that we have a base point, we can continue to build this guy out. Next up, let's talk damage. Technically, mob damage values change based on the world difficulty, but I'll be presuming that we play on a normal world, so my damage values are based on that. The Ender Dragon in a normal world does 10 damage with its melee attack, or 5 hearts. A zombie only does three, or one and a half hearts. And this is all assuming the player has no armor as well, so the values may be even lower. So the strongest boss in the game does just over three times the amount of damage one of the most common enemies does. That's not actually very much when you think about it. 
but the Ender Dragon supplements this with varying attacks that do different amounts of damage. Plus, players only have a max health of 20 or 10 hearts, without golden apples or any other modifications, of course. I imagine that the player will be spending a lot of time trying to get close to the boss, and dealing with other enemies that we'll add later on. So I'll want to make the damage the actual boss does somewhat strong. Let's set it to 7 for now, for about 3.5 hearts worth of damage. Alright, so we have damage and health. What other attributes can we change? Well, the other default one would be movement speed right here. But we probably don't want a large slime king flying around the map, so I actually want to decrease the king's movement speed slightly. But this is where things get tricky. Movement speed in Minecraft is surprisingly difficult to calculate as it is. You'd think a value of 1 would mean the default movement speed a mob can have, but each mob actually has individual movement speeds that offset this value. And the formula for calculating this is... confusing, at best. Even the Minecraft wiki sheds almost no light on this, which is something I may want to delve into in a further video, but for now, just know you may have to play around with different values before finding one that you enjoy. And what's worse is Slime's movement speed is actually based on their dimensional length, as they hop a distance relative to how long they are, rather than moving across the ground like most mobs. Luckily, I've already done some preliminary testing, so I have a value I think I want for my slime. But feel free to play around with this number yourself to get something you're satisfied with. For now, I'm going to set it to 0.4, which is maybe two-thirds slower than a normal slime of our target's size. Oh, speaking of size, this is a parameter that only a few mobs in Minecraft get to take advantage of. Those being slimes, magma cubes, and strangely, phantoms. The size parameter does what it sounds like. It allows you to change the scale of a mob. It can't be smaller than zero though, so I'll have to scratch my idea for making mini slime chests for now. Regardless, our step two was to make our slime imposing. And what better way to do that than to physically change the size of the slime? Play around with this value as much as you want, because you can get some crazy big slimes. But I found in my own testing that a size of 8 should be pretty good for what we're trying to do. So, with all those attributes set, we have a pretty good basic boss. If we go up to the top right here, where this box is, we can go ahead and copy the command to head back to Minecraft to test it out. Don't close this tab though, as we'll have to return here later to give our slime any other effects, as well as determine what loot it drops. Plus, in case you want to change any values, it's not the worst thing in the world to remake, but it's just so much easier if you just keep it all open like this. Okay, with our command now copied to our clipboard, let's go ahead and replace our original summon command with our new one. And now all we have to do is test it. And there we have it. Quite an imposing large slime indeed. Sure enough, its health is still tracking on our boss bar because we named it properly. And although it's quite hard to tell at this size, it is hopping around slower than a normal slime its size would be. Now let me just warp over to survival to test the damage. And there you go, exactly three and a half hearts. Just like we wanted. A rousing success. But if you recall, we've only tackled two out of our five steps so far. So in the next videos, we'll have to be looking at ways to add other threats or minions, devising a strategy to fight our boss, and then giving our boss new attacks. You now know enough to experiment with different attributes on MC Stacker and really make this boss your own, but there's one thing I didn't mention about our King Slime here. Specifically, what it is that slimes do best. But we'll get to that in the next video. As usual, thank you all so much for watching. Even just this first part took a ton of time to produce, so if it helped, make sure you remember to leave a like, and subscribe to stay updated when the next part releases. Until next time, guys. See ya!